All right. Um, thank you, guys. We can continue. I hope yeah. you can still hear me. Okay, clearly. Thank you. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to show you or just uh, introduce to us this morning again uh, is what is called an impedance meter. Right, let's do that. So there is a special meter that needs to be used whenever you are doing installations, for example, or whenever your technical team is attending to a problem you need to use an impedance meter. You don't use a multimeter to measure speaker lines, especially on 100 volt speaker lines. You only use an impedance meter. As you notice, most people do use a multimeter and then they spend time and hours fighting to see, oh, but I've got a short circuit, I've got, and then you push, I mean, you come with an impedance like meter, you measure, you tell them, no, the speaker line is fine. So you need to have an impedance meter. Either if it sells, you're dealing with the project and um, your client insists that he does his own installation. He just, just wants to buy the equipment. He doesn't want your technical stuff to install, which happens mostly here in South Africa. In that particular case, you sell him an impedance meter. Okay. There are two variations of impedance meters. Commonly on the market, you do get a digital impedance meter. And from TOA, we supply an analog impedance meter. Okay, so an analog or a digital impedance meter basically does what I'm saying. Uh, if you guys go to YouTube, uh, if you type in impedance meter, you should see a video clip that we did uh, of me explaining how to use an impedance meter in detail and why we should use one. Let's take a look at what an impedance meter does. An impedance meter on a 100 volt line or a high impedance speaker line, it does the following. It's able to tell you if there's an open circuit. It is able to tell you if the speaker line has got a short circuit. It is able to tell you if the speaker line has got an earth leakage problem. Right, let's take a look at each of these ones. So if you are using a Toa one and you put in your speaker lines and then you put in your probes and you connect to your speaker line, right? This, there's a pointer here. If it doesn't deflect, it means it's an open line, it's infinity. If it deflects towards zero, you need to be careful. Any number towards sitting on zero might mean you have a short circuit. If you're using a digital meter, the same. If you're using a digital meter, if it doesn't reflect, it normally tells you you are in the open range. If it reflects or gives you a zero dot zero dot zero, for example, a zero, sorry, a zero dot zero zero, it means it's an op a short circuit. So they do the same. One of the characteristics that is common between the two meters is this. When you are putting, when you have put your probes onto the impedance, onto the speaker line, you'll always hear a one kilohertz tone playing in all your speakers connected on that particular line. So you hear this And this plays in all your speakers, from all your speakers connected to that particular line. What this also means is, instead of you just measuring the impedance, you can do a physical walk of your speaker line. And any speaker that's not giving you that particular sound, if it's meant to be connected to that line, means it's disconnected. So you go up the ladder, connect it up, you have the same sound. Once you have walked the zone and you are happy that every speaker is playing the same sound, you then come and check what is the value that it is there. If it's a digital meter, it will just throw the value up, just show the value up, okay? The reason why I brought this digital meter, though we don't sell it as tower, is because a lot of people have come to me and asked me, okay, on it, I have got, I'm going to buy a digital meter, is it okay? Or I've bought a digital meter, is okay, it's okay. But if you look on the tower one, the digital meters are have got a limitation on the maximum number of reading on the, on the scale. With the tower meter, you can have a times one scale, times 10 scale, times 100 scale. Meaning to say, if I am reading on the 100 scale and my meter deflects to 100, it means that value times 100. That's 10,000. So it is important that, yes, this is analog, all right, 
but it, it really does outshine most digital meters on the market. That's what I need to bring to your attention. But they're both equally for normal standard lines, do the same. So I'm not going to go into the mathematics and the calculations part, all right? But I'm just gonna, I just wanted to show you the products that we recommend technical team to always carry with whenever they are doing impedance, uh, whenever they're working on a site or whenever they're making uh, sure that the speaker lines are squeaky clean. It is dangerous just to install speakers and then bring the speaker line to the amplifier, connect it, switch on. Digital amplifiers don't like short circuits. You blow them up easily. So it is important to technical side that you know before you connect any speaker line, you need to run an impedance check on it with an impedance meter, not a multimeter, not a mega meter, but with an impedance meter. All right. So on the technical side, uh, I will share you again with this little PowerPoint. It will be, it describes a few about where, uh, how to calculate, uh, how to, what, what, what to, how to use the information from the impedance meter to transfer that information and calculate it and use it as an output. For example, if I have an impedance reading of 200 ohm, okay, all you always do, guys, if you are using an impedance meter, always. Because you are dealing with a 100 volt line, it's 100 volt times 100 volt. So the, this formula stays as it is. The thing that doesn't, the thing that changes is your Z, which is your impedance meter. As you see again, impedance is not measured by R, it's, it's, it's initialized by Z. So it means 100 times 100 volts, it gives us 10,000. So your formula always, in simple case, if you are trying to see how much power the speaker line is going to demand, all you need to do is always 10,000 divided by whatever you are reading for the impedance meter. It will give you a guide. So for example, if I was installing speakers and I was not paying attention to the tapings, I've installed my speakers, I've, I've put my impedance meter and I'm reading 200 watt and I have a 30 watt amplifier. It means I cannot connect that amplifier because I'm asking a 30 watt amplifier to produce 50 watts. Guys, that's, that's asking for trouble, it will blow. Right, so it is critical, gents, uh, ladies, if they are there, yeah, it's critical to ensure that you understand this on the technical side so that we can make our, we can assist our colleagues on the sales side. Right, oh, so this is an example of uh, what you need to do or what you need to get. So you need an impedance meter.